Big Fluff. Hello, world. It's Stephanie Smart, and I am here to tell you. that I know some shit. Exotica. Hi, everyone. I'm Joel Murphy. And I'm Stephanie Smarr. And this is Stephanie Knows Some Shit. And we are continuing our conversation from last week with my beloved, Kristen Kish, who is just... We had so much fun talking that when we looked at the time, we actually said, okay, we need to, we need to stop talking because... A four hour podcast is long. So we're going to do another 45 minutes. Right now, we are at the point where Kristen has one top chef. She is executing flawlessly at Montan. Her personal life is struggling. My personal life's fantastic. I hate my job with every fiber and being in my body <laughs> at the Park, like more than anybody could ever imagine. Um, and our relationship had really changed. And it wasn't the love it wasn't the funny it wasn't anything we weren't together so often mm -hmm. so for the next couple of years you know it was wild and you had so much going on you came out which was mm -hmm. huge and montana was actually the place where Kristen came out to me because though you know when you love somebody this is rhetorical i guess you don't think about who or what or how they love I don't know. I never thought about it. Kristen, uh, literally, I just, di I didn't, it didn't matter to me who you were with as long mm -hmm. as they were great. Bottom line, I don't care. Could have been a dog. She could have just had a companion and an animal. Did not matter to me at all. But so we're standing outside. Do you feel comfortable telling the story? Totally. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So I had gone, we had to like take pictures for something and Kristen pulls me outside into behind the restaurant and she's like, I have something to tell you. And so, you know, I'm a straight woman. So naturally I'm like, oh shit, she's pregnant. I was like, oh, <laughs> here we go. I'm like, no, like this is a mess. Mm -hmm. So she starts making me guess and she's like, <laughs> I love that. By your, the way. First, your, your first guess out loud to me yeah. was, are you gay? You're gay. Yeah. And you said yes. And I go, Okay. No, 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 no. We we went around the block a little bit mm -hmm. with I me said, guessing though. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You tell I this. Said, it's better. It's your I, story. I think. I, I. I mean. I think this is how it went. And yeah. this in my head, this is how it went. Perfect. So we're standing in this alleyway, and I have something to tell you. Are you gay? No. Are you pregnant? No. Are you gay? No. And then you kept going for a couple more because I was like, <laughs> I I can't say it. And anyone that's had to come out. It is like, it is, it has nothing to do with anybody else except for this internal battle that you don't feel good enough. Right. So mm -hmm. it, it, she could have, she's my best friend. I could have told her anything in life and everything would be fine. But like, this is an internal thing. And so I'm, we're going through it. And then all of a sudden I'm like, it, I think I was like, I think you already said it or something like that. I and we finally, and, and we finally got like, all the way back around. You're and gay? I was like, yep. And I'm dating someone. And she is my, da, 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 da. I don't know. And I was like, does she suck? I was like, because <laughs> I really, I mm. probably, I probably said something like that because I was like, oh man. Because I was, Stephanie like, totally was trying to diffuse the situation of how nervous I was. She was like, are you in love with me? And I was like, no. That's what it was. The, yeah. that, was my first, that was it. That was it. So Kristen's like, I am gay. And I was like, when did you know you were in love? And she got so pissed. And I was being serious. I was like, you know, we slept in the same bed a bunch. I've definitely slept with you. Um, You're like a little offended that she's not. I was horrified. Well, okay. So you need to back up too, because I'll let you tell. You, you had an affinity for a few gay women. I did. Right? I did. Like, like I call it a, like a lovely admiration, right? I love a femininely butch woman, I would say. It's a very Yes, she does. Type. She does. Like yeah. a masculine feminine woman. 
Do you have an example? Like, is there a celebrity that you can? Um, I think we're, I, we're all Ezra, wondering. Yeah. No, I'll just say the girl who it was. It was Ezra Star <laughs> from um, Drink. She was the head bartender of Drink. She walks into Stir this day, and my fucking eyes. You should have seen. We all saw it. I was like, <laughs> "What is I've happening?" I've never told Ezra right this. And hi, Ezra. <laughs> so <laughs> makes me nervous. nervous. Yeah. She, Stephanie's, like, the way she would act and breathe and the cadence of her tone and everything changed around Ezra. Just so you know, I'm picturing, like, those old cartoons where the wolf sees an attractive woman and, like, his heart starts beating out of his Uh chest and his eyes get really Uh big. That's what I'm picturing, so. I couldn't Mm -hmm. talk, I couldn't speak, I'd never experienced something like this. I didn't want to have sex with her. Well, maybe I did, I don't know what it was, but I was like. (laughs) And she was enthralled, yes. And then Ezra has this, like, at the time, really like gorgeous girlfriend. Gorgeous. Like, she's she's really pretty. Yeah. And so Stephanie's like, I'm watching Heartbreak through <laughs> this other weird lens that I've never <laughs> seen before in her. So she- everybody, David and I are together at this point. <laughs> you all know. Like, yeah. She's fully in a committed relationship mm-hmm. with her boyfriend. And then I think there was one or two other people where you're like, huh. And so, but however, none of them wanted to be with stephanie (laughs) that's the bottom line guys none of them none of them saw and these were not these were all gay women you know so i think her questioning it was coming from like a real place you know because there are these like like those women out there that are like oh when did you know you love me and it's like fuck you it's not about you it's like my coming out story shut the fuck up (laughs) but like stephanie there is a there was like a, a deep was like, seed of, of something in there. <laughs> it's like, look at you. That's fine. My are you felt like this was your shot to, to finally, like if, some, if a lesbian was going to love you. Like, but I was she like, just I wanted could, me to be in love with her. Right, she wanted right. a lesbian. That's what I'm yes. saying. Yeah, like of all the lesbians that she knew, you were like her best shot to be in love with her. Yeah, because, you know, we'd gone through enough together. I was like, yes. it would be me. But it wasn't me, guys. That's... Just another dark story to go down, but you know. So Kristen, none Kristen of the kisses wanted wanted to kiss you. Unfortunately, none of the kisses. Oh, I mean, that's we, heartbreaking. We haven't asked John. He might. We don't know. We could ask my brother. Do not pee poo on my parade. I still, I still hold out for John. He was my first kiss. Oh, cute. Good one. That's Thank a good you. one. Yeah. Um. So that was a. So Kristen comes out in it, and I think what you said is beautiful because. We were and are best friends. You know how I breathe. You know how I sleep. You know how I eat. You know, you know me to my core. You know when something's off. But it's it's just never that easy, you know. And so you were going through that. You were running this restaurant. You were doing press. You were Barbara's like jetting me all over the world to come like cook with her. World. Yeah, and it was you crazy. know, this was a time where. We just didn't see enough of each other. True. Mm -hmm. When we did, it was like no time had passed. But, you know, you were living in a church and I didn't like that. I'm not very religious, but I don't really like dig the whole live in a church thing. A condo or a church that was converted into condos. With ghosts. FYI. Mm -hmm. I mean, very well could have been. But like life, life was starting to like we were we had it's crazy to have to think about a friendship being redefined over the years and it's something that we don't think about enough but something that happens so often oh yeah because humans evolve into something else therefore friendships and relationships evolve into something else and if you don't keep up with it you will keep each other in the same spot that you have always been that you feel safe and nothing good comes out of that at all so awesome so yeah i think we defined it and we kept up with it in a way that was was smart and responsible um we gave each other enough distance to like do do life. Yeah. Um, it was never, never. I mean, you just recently asked me a really poignant question. You were like, did it bother or hurt you mm. that I was traveling and doing all of these things? And my life, you became very, very, very famous, for lack of a better word. And I was well, really happy the- at my job. Well, I felt, you know, it's a hard thing when you start this journey with somebody and we started this Top Chef thing together. And that is ultimately what was the catalyst for things to change. And so it like spliced us into two lanes. And she's the one who introduced me to Barbara. She's the one who got me the job at Stir. She's the one who made me stay in Boston. 
And so coming from perhaps a place of guilt, I had never asked her that question before. And and I already kind of knew the answer. Mm -hmm. Like if there was resentment, we probably would have already talked about it. But like, yeah, I, I don't know. It was very recent that I just asked. This, this was in the month. last three months. Like, yeah, within the last yeah. one to two months that you asked me that. And truly, no, I was just so proud and happy. And I've, I've alluded to it a few times. My parents just, they love, love, love Kristen. My father still has anything she's done, any TV she's on that like isn't like, you know, like a little Good Morning America thing. He still has save. You know, like, how could I be jealous of somebody that I only wanted to succeed? And that's mm -hmm. how I felt about it. So would I have traded with you and you could have gotten your ass handed to you every night and talked about the good, the bad and the ugly at number nine park, which was the worst job I've ever had, but I'm not going to talk about it any longer. No. <laughs> but would I have taken your place? Absolutely. Um, mm. But still, this is what makes life and what makes it so ironic to look mm -hmm. back on and like silly and funny and exciting and cool. And we're just like, okay, that's great really really good time and also you in that time were becoming the person that you had wanted to be mm -hmm. you had wanted yeah. to express yourself in the way that felt most genuine to you and that mm -hmm. like if i was jealous of that like strike me down that's not a good friend yeah i do think she has better hair than me <laughs> <laughs> and i'm not i just want to reiterate i'm I'm not upset that Kristen was not in love with me. I was just a little hurt because I had two other very close friends come out of the closet. And I just assumed, especially with this one girl, Sadie, that she was going <laughs> to, hi, Sadie, I'm going to go walk the beach with her and her daughter tomorrow. But regardless, I was like, you know, slept in the same bed. She was my roommate in high school. When did you fall in love with me? And she was like, that is one of the grossest things you've ever asked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This was just an ongoing issue. And I was like, this. <laughs> this isn't about me. This is you. I will say there are a lot of lesbians out there that probably are fully in love with you. And so they should. Probably, yeah, they should reach out. Like hit us please, up on the podcast. <laughs> like if you're in love with Stephanie, please. Stephanie knows some shit on Instagram and yeah, just make let us know. Stephanie needs those. this. So come I don't on. think that yeah. I'm big. Yeah. I don't think I, I don't. I don't know. But yeah, I've got to, I have to tell the story that that it was a it was a it was a turning point, I think, in my head of like where our friendship was going and what it was. And we were working at Stir. This was um, this was pre Top Chef. This is like my first weekend. And we were cooking this Thomas Keller cookbook class. And it was like my first my first week. And I am nervous. And there are 10 people around and my hands are shaking. And I'm just like so uncomfortable with just me being me. And so I'm like, I'm, I'm taking the demo. I'm coming up to like the main cutting board. And it's my job to show people how to break down a chicken. I'm like, all right, I can do this. I start going. My hand is shaking so bad that it nicks my Oof. other finger. And it's like those small ass cuts that just will not stop bleeding. And I, I feel it. I see the blood and I'm go, I, I like probably turn bright red. And I take my hand, I drop it in my towel, I hold it, and I try to keep going. And Stephanie, like, sees it. But what's the, be the best part about it is that she saw it, but it didn't immediately jump in. She let me see if I could figure it out for, like, a split second. And when she realized I couldn't, she, like, swooped in. We didn't even have to exchange words. She came in. She took over. I just kind of stepped back, cleaned myself up. And then, you know, I re-entered into the scene when I was ready. And it was just, I mean, I don't know if that's like not a metaphor for a really good friend or a marking of someone that actually knows you. Like, I don't know what it is. That's, it was huge. And that will forever stick in my brain. Always. I love that because that's a memory she just recently told me that I didn't remember. And I was like, there's just a lot of beauty and nuances in friendships. And we've cooked together for so long. For so mm -hmm. long, I've probably to this day cooked with you the longest, like mm -hmm. in terms of like actual time spans, because we also cook incredibly, and I think this is obvious to everybody, incredibly differently. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't matter because we both always have the same goal. We just want to make like 
it tastes amazing. Good and food amazing and experience. feed people. Mm -hmm. And just all of this. So as Kristen is at Montan and I'm at number nine, you know, life continues to happen. And I honestly, Kristen, what happened after Montan? Where'd you go? Um, I quit and I, I left working for somebody else. And that was like the marker of me going out on my own. Where'd you go? I was, well, it was all that top chef stuff that was still right. going and right. partnerships and brand deals and this, and it's, it's I'm making more money. And it was only that fair than I like, was working at the restaurant. Right. Right. So and she I, is everywhere going everywhere, but she's always coming back and making sure I'm here. I'm good. We're calling each other constantly. We text each other constantly. I send Kristen really disgusting pictures of my feet and all the bathrooms that I poop in, which is just like a mm. lot of them. Um, <laughs> it's a lot. I get a lot of great foot shots on like different tiles or different <laughs> kinds of floor bodies. Oh, yeah. And are you not wearing shoes? No, I am Sometimes. wearing shoes. Okay. My shoes. Okay. Sometimes I'm in my own house, but I've got three squatty potties and three bathrooms. So like in the okay. tiles are different in each bathroom. <laughs> There's public Whole Foods is a popular place where I get home goods. From. Home, home goods, goods is good. Yeah. Very clean yeah. bathrooms. I do not discriminate unless it is unsanitary. And she doesn't say anything. She just sends the picture. And I'm because I'm like, oh, thing. she knows I know. where I am. But I know. <laughs> she knows I know where I am. I'm like, her stomach is having a thing. Maybe she drank mm -hmm. too much iced coffee ice cream, you know, because she takes yeah. her coffee like she does her ice cream. It's just like melted and sweet and like full of dairy. Um, I have a lactose like, issue. Are you ever like in a meeting? I'm I'm wondering like you're you're somewhere important in your phone. Joel, I think place. for the first like two episodes, I just got up in the middle. Oh, <laughs> yes, no, that is true. But yeah, no, yep. Kristen, I'm wondering like, do you ever get these texts when like, I open you... them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I I could be sitting next to someone on an airplane. I could be <laughs> taking a break on set. I could. I mean, I just open them. I think we're allowed to tell the story. Time for the story, guys. <laughs> Everything from this story on is not going to matter. So there, me. there are like fifteen years that we probably won't even touch. That yep, don't matter. One day, one day, one day, whatever we can talk in about like ten fun, years from now, stuff. we can look back on these years and be like, "Fuck, yeah." But so. there, most recently, it's not a pooping call. <laughs> it's <not>. a picture. <laughs> but Stephanie, please do share. Are we? You have to tell a story because it's about me, but are we in the grocery store? Okay, so I have two. <laughs> grocery, okay. st grocery stores first. Yep. Um, second one is um, when you weren't wearing pants recently. Yep. Okay, let's start with the, the first one. The grocery Not store. the pantless one. All right. So hey, guys. <laughs> it, was, it was a furricane. And why I call it? Because it was a faux hurricane. They like shut the city down. They were like, it's a hurricane. Nobody can work. I'm like, Kristen, I need some cake. Take it from there, boo. <laughs> so we are in our efficiencies and we're like, okay, let's walk to Stop and Shop. Stop and Shop is like not very far. So during this hurricane where there's like a couple branches on the ground, we're walking to Stop and Shop and we're fully going for snacks. It is a plan. It's a mission. So we go we're in. Go watch Fame. We, we did watch Fame. Yes. So we like went. This most recent Fame redo, like circa yep. 2012. Wonderful. Like redo. still in like a Blu-ray DVD player. Do people say yes. those? Whatever. <laughs> um, so we go to we go to Stop and Shop, and we're walking around the aisles, perusing, <laughs> if you will, kind of sorting out the scene of what we want. We each have our own baskets, and we go up and down each aisle, and we kind of circle around. And in the Stop and Shop, there's that whole bakery section that is like the the entire back wall, right? So it's like it's long. So we go through the bakery section. Stephanie's kind of like scooting ahead. <laughs> What seems to be going down the cheese aisle, the dairy aisle. So we're scooting and she's, she's, I don't know, 10 feet in front of me. So we're going, I have now, I am coming out of the bakery section. Stephanie is entering into the cheese section. And I literally, literally my face, <laughs> as if it hits a br brick wall, hits something. And I physically go back. Oof. Like my head jerks back as if like I just got whiplash. And I go and I was like, I kind of stop in my tracks. I'm like, what the hell is going on? So I was like, for a second, I was like, is this a cheese aisle? Like there was like a funk to this. <laughs> and I catch up with Stephanie and she's dying laughing like she is now just dying laughing. 
And I'll give you one guess as to what that smell was and where it came from. Yeah, I, I think- crop dusted Kristen and stop in shop. <laughs> <laughs> it was so gr- I have never smelled anything <laughs> to this day as bad as that. It was- I just wonder why all my friends weren't in love with me. Right. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> horrible i was like what the hell and so we have forever talked about the stop and shop cheese aisle cake aisle <laughs> cake um, and, I and we've ne- cake. and we've never actually talked about it out loud until no i've now. never re- i don't think i've ever told anybody we're like david's obviously heard of but he's like a third in our group you know <laughs> it but was I love you. <laughs> it was i i it's really hard it's it was a physical reaction that I hit a wall of air. Oh, no. <laughs> that something jetted me back. It was outrageous. We have to ask. It's a podcast where we answer the question, are you going to eat that? What will you leave behind? Why get out of bed? Will you be our neighbor? I'm Marty. And I'm Jonathan. We're two hosts. Infinite Universes. We, we have, have to ask. ask. New interviews every Tuesday. Find us on iTunes or online at wehavetoask.com or with the other great podcasts on the Peak Sloth Network at peaksloth.com. For the remainder of this, we're just going to tell stories. I think that's what we're going to do because I'm just now thinking of the Candids. Remember in New York with the Candids? Oh, <laughs> yes. Okay, we, we are transitioning because the details in our life story is in the moments. Blah, blah, blah. Um, I got married. She got married. Yeah. I married her. I'm great. Mm, yeah. We're happy. Everything's fine. Yeah. yeah. We love each other. We've never been to each other's houses. We live like 25 states away. Like, don't judge us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the other story. So it was. I also think there was another story that was teased in the last story. So I think there's now two stories oh. that are owed. Oh, yeah. this, is, this is the pantless story. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I, you need you need to tell okay. this one. Yeah. So everybody probably knows that like I die for a celebrity. Doesn't even matter A, B, C, D, E. Does not matter what grade of celebrity. I will freak out and I am just can't handle it. Now, somebody I don't consider a celebrity would be my Biff Kristen. So I call her in all states. Obviously, I'm, sent, I'm crop dusting her and stopping shopping and sending <laughs> pictures. Like, you know, nothing really phases me. So I FaceTime her and I know she's filming something, but like, I don't care. No offense, but like, I'm like, yeah, I've got it. I'm doing doing my job. I'm at a job. Yeah, she's working and she won't pick up. And I'm like doing something insignificant. So I'm standing in my bathroom and I have no pants on. (laughs) I have underwear on, but I have no pants on. And I don't think about it because I'm like, I don't know. I just don't think about it. And so I'm like, and the FaceTime comes up. And it's Kristen and Alton Brown. And I'm just standing there without my pants on. (laughs) So I see her name come up and I immediately obviously put someone else in frame with me because I'm like, this is going to be because she dies for a celebrity. I know this. Yeah. So let's put up Mr. Brown of all people. (laughs) And I couldn't tell her what we were doing at the time, but now it's it's Iron Chef. Yeah. And so I'm on the set of Iron Chef in the middle of filming. <laughs> and I answer the phone and there he is and there she is. And her body goes, you know, where it looks like just it's a floating head on the wall because they're out of frame of the camera. <laughs> her body goes, it like sucks into a black hole to hide herself. And all you can see is her head. I was like, hi, Alton. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love good eats. <laughs> Learned so much. I was like, okay, Kristen, you just call me back later. I'll talk to you later. Back. <laughs> <laughs> so just another person I can't wait to look in the eyes <laughs> later in my life. That so was, that was that was a highlight. Yeah. That, that was, was awesome. Highlight. That was a yeah. highlight. We also have this time. So Kristen was you were going through something. Doesn't even matter what it was. But I was like, I gotta get my boo out of the city. Like we need some excitement. Mm. We need some inspiration. We need we have probably $600 together, which, and I'm not downing that. Like that was a lot of money. We had some disposable income. Yep. We could like do something. So my mom is a flight attendant and I'm like, mama, can you get us two buddy passes to fly to New York? Because I'm like, we do not train. Like, I don't know. I didn't, we didn't know. Train. I didn't no. think about it because I, I come from a flying family. Like you, if you can't fly, it's not worth going to, or you mm-hmm. don't go, it doesn't exist. And my mom is like, absolutely Stephanie. 
So I surprised Kristen with this trip to New York just for the day. We're just not even 24 hours. We don't sit, we don't, $600 does not get you a hotel room. And Correct. Day, you know, so we call a taxi because this is pre Uber. And I look at Kristen and I'm like, <laughs> have, you, have you seen my wallet? Hold on. First of all, we went out the night before. So uh, we like peel ourselves out of bed. And Stephanie, I don't know made a choice of like big giant hoop earrings like j-lo style <laughs> remember that i do and you I, you, you yep. got ready and you put those earrings in and i was like yes you do you yes <laughs> I yes, like, I mean yes. Business. <laughs> <laughs> here i come nyc yes and so we're, yeah. yeah so we're in the taxi and i'm like kristen have you seen my wallet and she's like stephanie and i'm like i don't know where my wallet is so we drive back to stir so we have the taxi driver bring us to stir I find my wallet, get on the airplane. I don't lose anything anymore after this. But Kristen and I are walking. And this is like, you know, she's like Stephanie. And I'm like, yes. She's like, just take my picture. But like, don't make it look like you're taking my picture. Like, make, make it look like you're just kind of taking my picture, like, casually. But I'm not going to look at you. I'm going to look a little beyond you. And you're going to just and just take like a couple of these pictures. And I'm like. All right. So I'm walking through like Union Square and Kristen, we are making complete eye contact. There's nothing <laughs> candid and casual about these photos. She is looking in my soul and I'm looking back through the lens into hers. I'm like, I see you. You see me. I still have these pictures. I have a picture of us on the airplane with the hoops. I still you do? I do. I'll send them to you right now. <gasps> well, not right now because I get distracted and then I won't. Yeah. That's send, send me those because I can't. Rem- oh, I remember. Oh. So Stephanie has an arsenal of these pictures that one day I'm sure she will create an album and decide it's not the only time leak to publish. them. I've got I've got photos, guys. Like Kristen mm-hmm. can tell my farting stories because I've got a, I've got like a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's cool because this is just me. But I have photos of Kristen. There's one where mm-hmm. she's like Stephanie. We're drunk and she's in my bed and she's like, does it? Do- my neck's like a giraffe. And it's just a picture of a damn 10 foot neck. And I was like, and David's like in the, on the side being adorable. And like, I'm obsessed with my husband and all, or my boyfriend at the time. I'm like obsessed with David. I can't get enough. And Kristen's like, Kristen's like coaching me through our relationship. She's like, it's really weird when you sit at the opposite side of the room than your boyfriend. Like, I, I just don't know what to do when he touches me. I'm like, it's really weird. And David's totally aloof to like the panic that ensued and Kristen would be like, go, go like give him a kiss. And I'd be like, oh no, 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 no. I think that's too much. I might, <laughs> might give him the wrong impression that I'm clingy. She was like, no, right now you're getting the, giving him the impression that you don't like him. <laughs> Noted. Noted. Okay. I got this. Um, we went to we went to, and this is another picture that she has, and I I don't think I even have it. We went to watch Glee in 3D. Remember when Glee in 3D oh, came out in the theaters? In the Kristen, IMAX theaters? Kristen <gasps> loved her some Glee. And we all I love me why. Glee. My first question after, is she pregnant? Is she gay? Loved her yeah. some Glee. Loved oh my God. Cute Glee. girls. I was like, ooh. Uh, <laughs> Naya Rivera, babe. Oh, RIP though. RIP. Babe. Yeah, total babe. And so we're sitting there with our glasses on. <laughs> I'm like looking at all these girls being like, I'm totally gay. <laughs> and like a total dorkus and IMAX theater. We get out of the theater. They have these hats that have we in 3D. <laughs> these like dad hats. So we put on that fucking dad hat, those we glasses, oh and we took oh a my picture. God, we crushed it. Or yeah. this other time, Kristen and I, when we moved into the city, we, it's April. And we're like, let's go for a walk. And then we'll go see the Lion King remastered. <gasps> <laughs> yep. and i'm like kristen this sounds brilliant i'm like this sounds like the funnest day ever and so we get to the boston commons and i'm like do you do you smell that he's like smell like weed this is weed's not legal i'm like it smells like a lot of weed it's like what is that smell we walk into weed day it's just all the boston commons it's just like people like rolling joints smoking bongs like cloud in the air and we're <laughs> in the middle of weed day Oh wow! And Kristen and I are going to go see the Lion King remastered. I was like, I just don't know if we belong here right now. I was like, I have a picture from that day too. We did. I loved Weed Day. Weed Day was so funny. We didn't even smoke weed. We no, did we didn't. One. We did that one time. Which one time? 
out of the apple. You made it out of the apple and I got paralyzed. Oh, like, so, so breeze. yeah, I'm not like a weed person, but like there's something about engineering an apple to like be able to smoke out of it that you're just like, well, I have to try it. <laughs> so we engineer in Heartbreak Hotel. We in did Heartbreak a Hotel. lot of stuff. We did. And of course it was in my room because again, I can't I get in it. trouble. I didn't want to get in trouble. <laughs> I know. And I was like, mm. I don't think David was there, was he? No, I think it was just a you and me thing. It was just you and me. Uh-huh. Chris also, is- can I also say, um, just think it's bringing me back to this Hartford hotel room. Stephanie, when she cuddles you, if you're ever, <laughs> oh, no! if, if you're ever so fortunate to have <laughs> Stephanie Smart spoon you, um, her leg is a, is, it is a tree that just, like comes over you like a claw and it hugs you like a death grip and it's not it's not letting go it will not let go and i remember i was laying like this and her leg goes whoa and she's like she's sleeping because she also sleep eats keep in mind so she's like doing all these things but she's sleeping and her leg is just on me and so like a good friend i don't move I'm not going to, I'm not going to wake her up. Also, I don't want to wake her up and make this real awkward. So I'm just laying there. And her she leg is just over me. And her leg is just like, like holding me tied to the bed. And then finally she releases at some point in her slumber and I roll over. And we, I don't think we talked about it the next morning. No, because I didn't remember us sleeping. <laughs> I was sleeping. Oh my God. So many. What other things have we There's done? like, there's a lot of, like our friendship is, is a mosaic of all these little quippy stories. But if you really took each story and like, picked it apart, dug it apart, separated it, really thought about like the meaning behind all of it. That is a hundred percent the things that defined our relationship and our I friendship and just how we operate together. The thing I will that- never forget Deirdre. Deirdre said to us when we were out to dinner that when Steph and I would go out to dinner, we'd hang out together. We spoke a different language. Like literally no one could understand what we were saying. And Deirdre was like, why are you guys talking in another language that only the two of you can understand? And that's just, that's what it was for a very, very long you, time. You don't, you, you don't hear her brain like I do? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't hear that thought she had 25 seconds ago before she said it and she didn't even say it? No? No, we just, we are lucky. We are lucky yeah. to have each other is what it comes mm-hmm. down to. We've been through the good and the bad. I mean, you've been through the last, we have been through the last 20 some odd we should Maybe probably funny. figure that out. Hold on. God, how long I think it was, didn't you? You said the year. Yeah, I think I don't think it's twenty seven. Yeah, so, so it's, it's fifteen. Twenty twenty. That's fifteen years. Oh, fifteen. Yeah. Years. Well, I'm literally doing it on my calculator. <laughs> I was like, because I can't get a calculator out. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then another cool story about Kristen. So my birthday is April twenty fifth, nineteen eighty five, mm-hmm. and Kristen's adoption day is April twenty fifth, nineteen eighty five. Nineteen eighty five. Aww. We both had yeah. our monies then. I think there is it was, a, there's a lot of like synchronicity between the two of you. I think mm-hmm. that's what's very clear from all of these stories is that there's yeah, it seems like you two met and just are were very in sync from the beginning. It like, was easy. It was yeah. really easy. It was easy with her when I met her parents. Like things just, you know, when we went to legal seafood with my mom, like it was just everything was just Oh my god, or together. your dad at Ivy when your mom had to he was like Kristen insisted that her parents bring this fucking Casio keyboard from Michigan <laughs> to Boston. It was a Yamaha. Yamaha. It was a Yamaha. Yamaha. Okay, it was a Yamaha. <laughs> Kristen insists that they take this in their little car all the way across the country because she's going to become Mozart. Whatever. Yes. She can actually play the piano and is very good at it. But her parents come to visit and we're all hanging out and they were about to leave to drive back and i look outside or i was outside and i turn around and her father was tying her mother's shoe Mm -hmm. yeah mike and judy love each other so much and they're just yeah they're they're the best but you know that's that's the thing about friendships and if you're as lucky as we are i hope that you hold on to your friendships as close as well you know because Mm -hmm. You'll find yourself in New York taking non-candid, candid photos. Or- there, there are a lot of people in life that just kind of like you, you shed over the years because you grow up and things change and things happen. But I think, I th- honestly, I think Stephanie is one of few, very, very few people in my life that we have, we have without saying, we are agreeing to continue 
the growth individually, to continue the growth together, to communicate about what those things are when people need to communicate them. Because, you know, it, it, asking her questions that I would never have asked her 15 years ago, like it's important to ask those questions and vice versa, because otherwise our relationship will plateau at some point, right? There, there's, yeah. there, you, you can't just stay the same. And I think it's the greatest thing, like seeing Stephanie have more in common in a lot of ways with my wife now is like the greatest thing mm-hmm. ever, ever. Mm-hmm. The best. Kristen ever. and David are the same person. So it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, they're so, so similar. We've created a family. And mm-hmm. yeah, Bianca and I, we, we're both, I mean, it's Bianca's career. She's incredible. But she's helped me through so much through tapping, through meditation, through mantras, through chanting. Um, David and you. David and I just can talk about anything. Like David is also one of those Renaissance guys that can do anything, that can learn how to do anything, that can have a conversation with anybody. And so David and I, um, every so often, we don't talk often, but we'll get in like like a five minute text back and forth. We kind of talk about important stuff. And then yeah. that's it for the next time it happens. And it's, it's, it's a really good feeling to know that she has someone like that. I have someone like Bianca that we're kind of, for all the times that we weren't okay, that we're actually okay right now. You know? And yeah. it's big. Yeah. You know, I think you touched on such a cool thing too of, yeah, like you meet people in your 20s and, and you two have stayed in touch. And there's maybe some version, it, like you said, this Top Chef thing was very quick it was immediate you hadn't really thought about it but it sends you off on these different paths but if there's a version some parallel universe where the two of you are still living in efficiencies maybe you're having fun but it's not it's kind of sad at that point like you needed to go off and become complete people and it's just it's really wonderful to hear how you've had these different lives but have found a way to always stay close and You know, I I think it's just cool because I think that is something we all go through and it's to find someone that you connect with like that is such an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. And I have I've like. I've learned I've learned with you. Mm -hmm. Same, you know, and that's something really beautiful. Sorry, now I'm getting all like I'm like in my head. I'm like, that was so beautifully put. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, the the, will one day write a journal of all the. (laughs) <laughs> crazy nutso stories with a photo next to it Yota. because it is it is a it is a friendship that has that has seen and gone through like the the, the craziest things the craziest things that no one should ever have to do it alone and to be, like have someone that you can walk through it that experienced it right mm-hmm. there with you that kept you in line like it really is I mean, we did a good job. We did a really good, good job. job. Yeah. We used to have, remember, Mommy Doesn't Touch Mommy shirts? Yes. If, yep. <laughs> um, if, our, if it didn't work out, if Kristen and I did not get married by a certain age, it was probably like 40 or something like that. <laughs> we were going to get married and adopt <laughs> and we'd have a cute little little baby. And then like, just imagine Kristen on one side and me on the other. And it would say, Mommy Doesn't Touch Mommy. That was it. Yeah. We thought that was the funniest thing in the entire world. We also started a catering company. Oh, that yes. Never, never took off. We mm-hmm. we it never started, but we did have business cards. Business it was cards. called Butter and Parsley, and they were really nice business cards. They were beautiful. <laughs> we like were going fonts. To, yeah. We were gonna become the Martha Stewart of the Boston catering scene. Um mm-hmm. unfortunately, we didn't do anything with that. <laughs> um and you know, as we wrap up, how we're we've been talking for a while. It's really about mm-hmm. time to wrap up. Okay. Yeah. I, I have yeah. a story that I just think because we've talked about how long we've known each other and all of these things that we've gone through and whatnot. Um, it's another humorous story. So <laughs> I have what most would define, including my therapist, Marika, as control issues. I like to be in control. Kristen likes to be in control. One thing we never really argued on was who drove. I drove. Oh no! <laughs> I was. Dead. I drove for a while. I when I was still with my ex boyfriend, I had a car. It was a Ford Freestyle. It was a very very dumb decision to buy that car. It was like for soccer moms, but I was like, I just come from driving a minivan. I learned how to drive when I was twenty two. Segway story. 
However, Kristen's like, I'm going to drive. And I'm like, I, I do not feel good about this. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm like, it's okay. You know, I'm, I'm like a nervous passenger in an Uber. I'm fine because that's like their job. You know what I mean? So I just take it as they're not. I was like 24. 24. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Young. So we have to borrow our boss's car because we don't have enough money to pay our purveyors. So we have to go to Restaurant Depot to get food. No problem. Kristen gets into the passenger to, to the driver's seat. She buckles her seatbelt. I take my seatbelt, <laughs> take the seatbelt from the back. I take the other seatbelt from the back and I take the one from the middle and I tie them all in a knot and bow. And I'm like, OK, I think I'm safe. So we're going on a one way street on Temple Place. So you can't it's not a two lane thing, but you have to take a left. You can only take a left into barreling traffic, like barreling traffic. So I was sitting there and I'm like, you're OK. You know, everything's my palms are sweaty just thinking about it. Kristen is turning. <laughs> she is physically turning the wheel while checking herself out. I was fixing my hair. I was fixing, was fixing my hair. hair in the rear view mirror. And I was like, what's your price? Like? <laughs> so Kristen drove us there and we, we shop at Restaurant Depot. We give our cash back. And I was like, yeah, I, I love to drive. Yeah. <laughs> I just think it would be really you, you know you did your part and it was fine and you did such a good job we were in one piece but i'm just gonna i'm just gonna drive it back how do you feel about that she's actually guys she's driven me one time since then i'm a good driver she's a very good driver but she's 20, 24 in a in our boss's bmw and driving in the city through boston comments Spring not ideal nine never <laughs> Which also, if people have never been to Boston, I remember driving. Th those drivers are aggressive. Like they're, yeah. you have to be on your game. Like you have to be. Yeah, like they won't yield for you. They're no, no one's gonna like make way for you. You have to be on it to drive See, in Boston. No matter what your hair looks like, they're not gonna stop. Yeah, you. I would just yeah. like to say we are fine. We are here. <laughs> speaking of such story, and no accidents happened. Truly, they yeah. didn't. And they my did. hair looks great. You do always yeah. just have such good hair. <laughs> right now. I try to give a fine a little bit. Don't you look me. great. You look great. And Joel, you look beautiful. Well, thank you. So everyone, that was just a little taste. And we'll be sure to do it again because stories will come up. But I just thought it was so... Honestly, if I'm being completely honest why I didn't, wanted to do this episode, it was for me and for you. Mm -hmm. Because... It's been a fucking great time. Mm -hmm. And we don't, we haven't really talked about all these fun little stories in a very long time. No, no. And it's, guess what? It's your podcast. So you can talk about whatever you want. Because I know <laughs> shit. <laughs> I do think it like, it would be amazing. I could see a coffee table book where you take all these photos that you have with the oh stories. Like the two of you should collaborate and just put out the it's photos. Co with co coffee book. Yeah, I think it would be great. I think people I would buy that. I have a printer, that. Kristen. We can at least make three. <laughs> I would buy it for, for, yeah. from us. I own two of Kristen's cookbooks. You do? And I, I bought a lot more than just that. That was a whole Christmas. If I love you so much, your, your book will be the only gift anybody gets. And it was. And I made you sign them. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Even to my parents. <laughs> they were like, uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> they're like we don't want this they, were, they don't cook they're like oh it's probably next to my, but guys to be honest it's probably next to my college d diploma so my um i would can i can i just also say one more thing that you almost tried to kill me with um peach and mango juice <laughs> sorry okay <laughs> <laughs> now we'll leave we'll leave that little water we'll we'll leave yeah. that hanging for next yeah, time we'll leave the time that i tried to see if Kristen really was allergic to a uh, stone oh my god <laughs> Oh no. Whatever. You have to learn. Sometimes it's your head. I was just making sure it wasn't. She's being a good friend. It was, was it was okay. Lord's work. I was just yes. trying to figure it out. And she is. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you cook her stone fruit. <laughs> well, that's a that's a hell of a tease for part three, yeah. I think. That's a You're good. welcome. Uh Kristen, is there things that you want people to know about? Is there anything you want to mention before we leave? Or like I know maybe. Can you tell oh, us, does that have an right. air date? Everybody's asking me. Uh, June 15th, Iron Chef will drop. I'm pretty sure all the episodes go at one time because that's Netflix, but I also, that's beyond my pay grade. So I'm not sure. But June 15th, something's going to come out on Netflix in the world of Iron Chef. And then okay. 
Um, Through the eyes of Alton Brown, who has seen me pantless. Yeah. So when you watch him, just know. Do we know which episode? Do we know which episode? Like, can we watch to see if his face is different in that episode? Like, he just like looks so much happier. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. We'll figure it out. I can find out. I'll find out. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I want to see. Like, yeah, well, all this different this episode. Like, what's yeah. so? <laughs> yeah. Please watch it and like stream it a gajillion times. Just you know, because we want to do yeah, it yeah. again. Yes. Are you serious? I'm watching. I don't joke when I say like when I go to bed, I'm watching Iron Chef Japan because like there's like 14 seasons on Amazon Prime. But we're Netflix people, mm. so you go to that Netflix, everybody, and you watch the newest Iron Chef because she is going to crush it. Um. It's going to be so amazing. And I'm so proud of you and just all of your endeavors. And I think that's the one that like, you know, it's weird watching your friend on TV because you're like, she doesn't talk like that. Like, whatever. I love watching you. on. <laughs> I actually love this show so much that I'm like, this is the best. Mm-hmm. So, guys, make sure to watch Iron Chef on Netflix June 15th. It comes out. Um, I have no news other than I'm having a BLT for dinner and David got so excited about it and, but he forgot to buy the bread. <laughs> Wait, I know it's, it's fine. It's fine. Um, but I'm doing a juice cleanse. This is my second day, which oh. also we can talk about next time. Damn it. You didn't <laughs> tell me about that. I know because I didn't want to tell you because then if I told you, you'd be like, Kristen, you're acting different because you haven't had any solid foods. Like that one time that you tried to do that juice cleanse back at stir. Remember? Okay. It was a disaster. <laughs> um, I'm drinking Skittle flavored water right now. Have you talked about that yet? It's a, a lot. She's talked about it a lot on <laughs> so the show. She texted. She texted me a picture once, and I don't know what it was, but there was a picture of a green, like giant Ecto-cooler. drink that looked like Ecto Cooler. And I was like, Steph, is that Ecto Cooler? And she was like, No, it's Skittle powder. <laughs> what? Yeah, what? I never heard of this until she started bringing it up, and she's brought it up multiple times on the show. My, this is this, this is green apple. <laughs> is it like a crystal light powder? Yes. Oh, you know who just walked into the room? Bianca. Mm-hmm. Hi, Bianca. Just- well, guys, now you've got four of us to say goodbye. Bianca's like, I'm going to be on board. No, she's like, like- <laughs> she's so cute. She's so cute. Um, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. Joel, thank you for being Joel, just the most amazing human. And Kristen, thank you for being you, being my friend through all these years and seeing the ups and the downs. And I've enjoyed watching nothing more than the movie of your life as well. Uh, I love you. I love you too. I love your podcast. My favorite podcast, the only podcast that I probably will ever do from this point forward. <laughs> thank you. So we feel really special, guys. Um, all right, Joel, that's it. That's it. That's it. So, guys, remember, if you're confused, we probably are, too. But together we can figure it out. Stephanie Knows Some Shit is hosted by Stephanie Smar and me, Joel Murphy, and produced by me. If you enjoyed the show, give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts. And instead of a review, tell us about a meal that you ate or made recently. We'd love to read about it. Hey, this is Chris. And this is Joe from the Curioso Podcast. And we give our stamp of Curioso approval to the podcast that you're listening to right now. 